Hello. Today I'd like to show you how release automation can be integrated with Docker to dynamically provision and deprovision containers as part of a deployment. Let me start by showing you the environment we're going to use for the demonstration. Uh, this screen shows us the, the Docker environment and as you can see we've got various containers here that are listed. They've all been running for several weeks. If we switch to our release automation dashboard, so the dashboard is the landing page for the product and it shows you the uh, deployments for the environment. And on the system summary here, you can see that we currently have seven agents as part of this deployment. And you'll see that go up when we do the actual um, Docker integration. So we're gonna to switch to Jenkins. And for the demonstration, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this, this cars application and we're gonna start a build. Uh, the cars application actually requires uh, a multi-tier architecture so we need a database a middleware server and a web server and the first step here you can see we've just started build 162 and in the build history you'll see in the console that down here we've actually called release automation to start the deployment and we'll switch to our release automation server and we'll just go into our deployment plans and you can see here in sprint 2 we've just started build 162 the one we just saw and if I go to our process execution uh, this is the process and the first thing we've done here is we've actually created our docker containers and we've then started our docker containers and the next step is to then wait for those containers to register and make themselves available to release automation which is what we're doing here and while it's doing that we'll just go to docker and I'll refresh this screen and you see now we've built three containers um, we've used the build number to identify them. So we've got 162 database, 162 web, and 162 middleware. And they've been running for 47 seconds. If we go back to our process, and you can see now that that process is completed and the registration is completed. And we've also now assigned these new containers to our deployment. And if I go back to our deployment here, back to click on here, uh, we put a stop in just to stop this moving forward, just for the sake of the demonstration, we're going to release that. So this deployment now carry on, and while it's doing that, I will go to the assignment screen. So this is the agent assignment, so here's the application name, this is the environment that we're targeting, and we can see that for the application server, we now have a, the container allocated to the middleware server, to the application server. The database server is allocated to database and our web server is allocated to our web server. So at this point, all of our new containers are allocated to release automation and we have a release running. And if we go and look at our deployments, you can see here 162, that's the one that we just kicked off. So I'm going to drill into that. So the first thing that happens is we actually distribute the artifacts that have been sent from Jenkins are then distributed to our execution servers within release automation and then distributed to the agents which are on the new containers. Now when that's finished uh, the deployment will start so in a few seconds that will finish and what will happen is the deployment will start and running through all the deployment steps required to actually deploy these artifacts to the new environment. So the artifacts are now deployed and we've now moved into the deployment phase. And what happens is we initialize this phase and we'll then start actually running the relevant steps on each of these layers to actually deploy the artifacts and configure them. So while it's running, I'm gonna to switch to the summary tab. And what you can see here is if I click on our database deployment step, uh, the server being targeted is the database server. If I look at the, uh, the JBoss, we see that's our middleware server and when we do the start up, that's our web server. So you can see here, um, as I showed you this assignment, those new machines we provisioned are now being used as part of this release deployment. And if I go back to our deployment step, um, that's now done. We're now at the final step of the deployment. And when this finishes, we'll go to our post deployment step. And the post deployment step is where we do the validation testing. So at this point, we'd run any testing that's been required to validate the build that we've just done. And in our example here, we've created it that there's two things. If the validation test fails, uh, the overall deployment would fail, that would leave the Docker containers in place so that the development team can then look at the deployment and check why there was an issue. 
Uh, if this validation test passes, as it will do, we've got a dynamic deprovisioning. So what we're going to do is the test has worked. We've deployed it from Jenkins. It's worked. Um, we're going to dynamically then deprovision those Docker containers and clean up the Docker system. So we'll just wait for this test to finish, which will take a, a second. So the test is now passed. And because it's passed, we've moved on to the final step where we're going to then deprovision that Docker environment. So this final step here, step number two, we're now running a deprovision job. Uh, that will then remove those containers. And when that completes, as you can see, the deployment is now successful. And if I go back to Docker and we refresh this screen, you see those containers now been stopped and deleted. So I hope you enjoyed this brief demonstration of how release automation can be used with Docker. If you want to see more of how this demonstration was created, please watch the upcoming recording where I'll show you how the demonstration was created and the additional integration points available with Docker. Thank you.